Hey everyone, how's it going? Hey, today's video, uh, kind of an interesting thing I decided to do that I thought I'd share with you guys. Um, I am big into security and automation in my house, like I've probably said before. Um, I've done a lot of work to uh, put in a really cool security system in my house. Uh, I have a lot of automation. So um, one of the things I determined that I wanted at my house was I wanted a um, vehicle detection system in my driveway. So um, I just wanted a notification if there was a car coming down my driveway. Um, so having a notification that there was a car in your driveway is a good cue to go look at the security cameras and just see who was at your house and what they were doing and that sort of thing. Okay, so I did some research online uh, just trying to buy something that would, that would do what I needed. Uh, this is a, uh, a driveway alarm system. It's also used for uh, opening automatic gates. Um, this is like a pipe that, you, that has a, uh, a, a loop of some kind in it that you bury in under the ground and there's a module. Um, this actually, I mean it was a hundred bucks just for the sensor. That didn't even include the actual module. Um, so it was a little pricey. Um, and then also what I found when I, when I read into these uh, and studied them further is that um, they require your vehicle to be moving at a certain minimum speed to function correctly. Um, um, there's a few um, PIR, um, infrared type sensors, um, that are for cars. What I learned about these is that uh, they require a heat difference on the vehicle to be able to see it. Um, so it was pretty particular that, well, pretty much people wrote that you have to point it where it would see the exhaust pipe or else it would miss the car. Um, and then inductive loop, uh, this thing here at the top um, is exactly what I bought. I paid $36 for it on eBay. Um, it's this little module and then you build your own loop. And um, let me show you a little bit now about how I designed the loop. Okay, so in the design of this loop, uh, I did some research online and I found a few documents I'm going to show you now. Um, uh, this is one document I found that shows kind of a diagram with some uh, recommended uh, geometry for the loop. Um, I also found uh, it's, it's much more common for these uh, loops to be saw cut into uh, like asphalt and streets and stuff. Um, but they can also be uh, put in concrete in conduit, which is similar to what I'm going to do, which is what's shown in side view here um, and then top view right here. Um, also, what I found, which uh, I thought was pretty useful, is this document that I found online um, has some information about the perimeter of the loop and how many turns it's required. So this is what told me I needed three turns. So the feeder cable, uh, it's important that the feeder cable is twisted. Um, I found that I could use 18 gauge wire for that. I actually bought some uh, 18 gauge speaker wire. So it was two conductor uh, attached uh, and then I twisted it but it does have to be twisted. It says 20 turns or more per meter. Okay here's a uh, illustration of a loop similar to mine uh, that's shown here to the right is the actual loop that goes in the ground goes in the uh, in the driveway in my case so that's in PVC conduit uh, the loop itself um, is 16 gauge XLPE insulated copper wire the stranded um, I bought a hundred feet of that because my loop is uh, nine feet by four feet so a hundred feet was enough to do three turns in that loop um, the extension cable or the feeder cable it's called sometimes from the loop to the detector uh, the module that I purchased uh, I used 18 gauge speaker wire um, it wasn't twisted it was just two conductor speaker wire so I used the drill to twist it together uh, to my uh, module which is inside my house so what we're looking at here is the uh, loop I'm making out of uh, plastic conduit this is PVC conduit so I'm putting a T right here at this corner and as you can see it goes around I used uh, sweep elbows in the corner and uh, I'm gonna glue this last piece in right here okay I'm just gonna show you how I've done these joints here I always use um, primer uh, you get the best results if you wipe primer on PVC pipe first this purple stuff I've been using it for years and then uh, the PVC cement um, you definitely want to lay something out because this purple stuff gets everywhere uh, it'll stain and stuff of 
where you put some on that side. Now for the purple stuff, there's no time limit. Um, you can wipe that on there and you can let it dry or whatever and take your time. But when you put the PVC glue on, you got a time limit. And it's about uh, 15 seconds or so. So I always wipe PVC on both parts. I'll push it together. It's best to put a twist in as you put them together. And then you also need to hold them for about 10 or 15 seconds. Because uh, the reaction will push them apart. Okay, before I try to fish a wire through here, um, I want to try to help the glue set up. So I'm going to run a little air through it um, for a little while and then maybe give it an overnight um, and let all that glue dry. The inside, the glue that's on the inside uh, will take a little longer to cure because it's not exposed to the atmosphere. The glue on the outside is going to um, seal up pretty quick. So uh, this will help the inside. So here's the actual wire that we want to put through the loop and uh, what I did is I just tied this string together in a continuous loop all the way around and I put a loop in it. Um, so my process here is just to use this to pull the wire all the way around multiple times. So this is just uh, that wire I ordered uh, that hits 100 feet of that uh, special wire for making this loop. It's 16 gauge uh, cross link polyethylene. I just made this little um, spool thing here just so it'll feed out nicely. The intent here is this uh, spool of wire has got to get looped around here three times. So that's what I'm going for. All right, so as you can see, I've come all the way around once. Um, that wire doesn't feed that great off of that uh, thing. I'm having to kind of manually do it, but um, <clears throat> that's still better than just lifting it up off the ground because it's uncoiling as it does this. So I've made one complete loop now, and uh, I'm just going to make two more loops so we have three loops total in the conduit, and we'll be all set. So one of the things I did here, um, I was just pulling it on with the string. Um, and it got awfully tight. Um, I'm on the I'm on the third loop now, and uh, the string got really hard to pull. So what I started doing is I'm starting to pull through the first loop again to get me some extra here. See, I've got one loop all the way around. This is the second loop, and this is the last loop going in right here. So I'm just going to pull the slack out here because it's getting too much friction to pull all three loops at the same time. So we actually got our three loops now. Um, if you think about it, ignore the string. Wire goes in, goes around, comes here, goes around. Here's this one, it's got a lot of slack in it. And it comes out over here. So at this point, we don't need our string anymore. Okay, at this point, I got my loop all set up. Here's the lead wires coming out. There's the two loops going around. So pretty much what's going on here, wire goes in, goes around, goes around, comes out. So this is our three loop setup. All I'm going to do now is uh, take these wires and fish them out through the T, which is where, uh, where we actually want to close this thing up.
And all I'm going to do there is glue that back up and um, this will be done. Now usually when I'm gluing these things up, I put a ton of glue on the inside and on the outside and then I push it together. Uh, in this case, I'm not. I'm just going to put it on the outside and I'm going to not even put it all the way up to the edge because I don't want to get it on the wires. Okay, these are the uh, two lead wires coming off of the loop. Um, they turned out not to be the same length, so I'm going to cut them off to the same length here. Got them as close as I could. Um, so these have to be twisted. In fact, the wires are supposed to be twisted all the way um, from the loop to your uh, control module. So uh, I'm just going to use this drill to twist these. Okay, what I did here, uh, before I went any further after I built the loop, I just wired it up temporarily to the module and um, I pulled my uh, tractor loader over the uh, front end of the loop uh, just to make sure it was detecting. Uh, so you can see when it detects the green light comes on and the multimeter here shows um, zero resistance uh, on the two contacts. So this was just a way I um, tested out the loop before I buried it in the ground. Once I had tested the loop, I knew everything worked good. All I did was, um, for waterproofing purposes, I just shot a bunch of silicone right in the end around the edge of the wire um, before I glued the pipe into it. A couple photos here. This is the loop laying in the driveway where I was going to locate it. This is the uh, trench I dug uh, to put it, and that there it is in the trench. And then finally, this is just the solder joint between the feeder wire and the loop wire. <clears throat> so here's the driveway after I filled it back in and uh, buried the loop. Uh, you can see there the uh, conduit sticking out the edge. This is before I trenched the rest of the conduit to get back up to the uh, house. But there it is, uh, finished in the driveway. One of the first things I did once I got it buried was I pulled the tractor on top of it and hooked the wire up to the module and just made sure it was working. So because I had to bring a conduit inside to my basement, I had to do some drilling, which was a pain. Uh, I did get to use my new Bosch uh, rotary hammer. Um, that piece of blue tape is just there on the wall, just so I would have a guide for uh, level. Uh, but anyway, I had to drill through the wall, so that's what I'm doing here. What you see here is the uh, enclosure that I, I purchased to mount the uh, module, the inductive loop module. Uh, so there's a little piece of DIN rail in there and the base for that module. And then I put a duplex outlet in there uh, just um, to, to plug in a 12-volt um, DC power supply. That's what the module runs on. Um, so that's what, uh, that's what you're seeing there. Uh, and, and I'm hooking up the uh, loop wires, the twisted loop wires uh, to the base right here. So this is the module that I uh, purchased. That's, this is the module that runs the loop. Uh, that's what it looks like. This was $30-something dollars on uh, eBay. It's got a power light and then a green light that lights up when it's detecting something. It's got a bunch of switches on it that let you kind of customize some settings and sensitivity and stuff like that. So it came with the base uh, where you do the wire connections that it just plugs into. Uh, and then I powered it just with a 12-volt uh, DC transformer. Okay, that half inch conduit holding the uh, wire from the uh, inductive loop comes in through the wall here from the outside and it's run through this uh, piece of plastic conduit up to the top and then the wire is routed along the uh, um, joist up there into the next room where the um, water heater is located. So this is an equipment closet that has a uh, water heater uh, down in my uh, basement equipment room um, and then up here 
is where I mounted the uh, enclosure for the vehicle module. So in this particular video, I didn't want to make it incredibly long, so I really just wanted to show you how I built the loop, show you how I installed it, and just to demonstrate that it worked. So the output from that module is a contact closure output, uh, and in this video I didn't go into any anything about what I'm doing with that contact closure uh, output. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that in a separate video because that's kind of complicated in its own in its own right. So um, that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you how I built the loop. Um, hope it was useful to you. Um, what I found when I looked online was um, uh, there's not a lot of DIYers making inductive loops uh, like I just did. So I had to um, I had to kind of figure out some stuff. But um, anyway, hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did. Hit the like button, and if you want to see more videos from me, of course you can hit the subscribe button too. Thanks.